Oh, what is up, everybody? I know it's been a while, but here we go. We got big earnings to talk about, and, and one in particular that I wanted to bring up is, uh, as you might know, one of my largest positions here going to be Meta Platforms, formerly known as Facebook. We're going to talk about these earnings and see what's going on. As you can see, the stock um, <clears throat> today, look, I'm recording this on Thursday, probably going to come out on Friday. So stock went down 3.5% um, today, which was shocking, and here's why that was shocking to me. Um, <clears throat> and by the way, it was you know down really as much as six, you know I think it was around six percent at one point was the furthest it went down. Um, <clears throat> shocking to me, and here's why. Well, it was a fantastic report in my opinion. Um, as you can see, I, well, I don't know if it'll show the that won't show the the post market here. Unfortunately, um, <clears throat> it actually oh yeah it looks like it will. Yeah, in the after hour session, it surged massively. We're talking about a you know a big jump. Uh, you know somewhere around. 5% upward. I think it topped out around 4.5%, I should say. And then promptly by the next trading day, Thursday here, today for me, um, <clears throat> it opened up down quite a bit. Um, <clears throat> in my opinion, I, I just, you know, I don't think that was necessarily a warranted move, but we'll take a look at the earnings, see what we can find, and uh, yeah, let's <clears throat> let's dig into them, see, see what's going on with this one. Obviously, I have a lot of money invested here, so I want to make sure that my investment's still, still what I'm looking for in a company. Um, so, first off, we see the headline of the results, and holy smokes! And you're looking at something absolutely beautiful, a nice, beautiful, mm, juicy. I mean, this is a juicy report here, just based off the numbers. <clears throat> Gap EPS four dollars thirty nine cents. What? That's a line this company has not seen in a hot minute. That is a ridiculous amount of net income generated, and we'll see those numbers specifically. But that's really the focus this company's been getting towards, right? We talked about, uh, you know, we, we've we've mentioned it where, you know, in the last couple of years, Zuckerberg has really talked about the this year specifically being a year in which they grow that efficiency. This is the year of efficiency, okay? They are going to lower costs. And that's their main focus, right? They're going to expand their products and still lower costs because it was getting a little unruly for a little minute there, a little, little unruly. And here they are back to where they were. That's fantastic to see. Now, revenue, this is a fantastic number, by the way, too. 23% revenue growth. So this is a company not only that decreased the costs, but they also increased revenue by 23%. Some might have you believe that's not physically possible. To have not just not just slightly double digit growth, that's good double digit growth. To have that and also lower your costs is fantastic. It's ridiculous. They beat by seven hundred million here. Just a great beat and a great uh, revenue line. It's good to see, and and we'll see kind of what detailed that in their press release. They go into detail by segment. And it's it's pretty fun to look at, right? So we look at the daily active users. This is a line they always love to share <clears throat> because this is important. This is where you get your money, especially with ad rates and ad impressions being the main source of money. Um, seven. This is crazy to me. Family daily active people, $3.14 billion on average. Every day, 7% growth. Monthly active, 3.96, 7% growth. Family daily active users, 2.09 billion, up 5%, and up 3% of monthly active. Those are good growth lines for every, how do they grow users? I don't know. It's, it's just shocking. <clears throat> it's shocking to me. Uh, here is where the big line is, though, and I mentioned it, is the growth, and really not the growth, I should say, the recovery of ad rates. So ad impressions and price per ads. Ad impressions delivered across uh, the family of apps was increased by 31% impressions. More people sharing their ads on the platforms. And the average price, oh, decreased 6% year over year. So, hey. Look, we've seen some ad recovery, and uh, I didn't look at this beforehand, but 6% decrease. Kind of shocking to me. You know, we've seen some good reports. 
some good results uh, here. Now, ad rates, they're still in a healthy spot, right? We, we look a couple of years back, and they definitely weren't, and they've already seen a massive recovery since then. So 6% is, I guess, not an awful shocker year over year, but um, ad rates are recovering, and it's still looking good. Um, but the ad impressions, obviously, is wild, too. 31% more ads seen is kind of crazy. Uh, <clears throat> these people are on the platform more often. So then we get into the press release, and I love this because it's got all these hard numbers, rock-solid numbers. Uh, let's just center that a little better. There we go. And I love a rock-solid number. Here's just a – they start off with a quote from the Zuck himself. We had a good quarter for our community and business. A good quarter. This is a great quarter, Mark. Um, so subtle. Um uh, I'm proud of the work our teams have done to advance AI. Of course they mentioned AI. If you're a tech company and you haven't mentioned AI, you're just getting left behind. Um, and mixed reality, as they talk about quite a bit, with the Oculus, with the launch of the Quest 3, the Ray-Ban Meta Smart Glasses, and our AI Studio. Now, the Quest 3, I've seen a lot of videos from it. looks fantastic, actually. I just recently purchased a Quest 2 when they announced the Quest 3 because the Quest 2 went on sale. And it's a whole lot of fun. But it looks like the Quest 3 has actually made a ton of improvements. Somehow it got dark in the last literally 10 minutes. It's pitch black outside out of nowhere. Don't know how that's possible. <clears throat> Anyways. Let's see what's going on here. They start off with the financial highlights and they'll break it down. Um, you know, per, per line here. So we start with revenue. That's where you see the 23% growth. <clears throat> Income from operations. <clears throat> oh, sorry, I skipped one. Cost, this is the line I talked about, and I looked at this beforehand. Cheating, I know. Normally, I'll give you the blind reaction, but here I didn't. <clears throat> cost and expenses, down 7%. Holy smokes! 23% growth in revenue, 7% decrease in cost and expenses. And what does that mean for the income from operations? This is the Facebook slash meta that I know. 13 0.7 billion dollars of income from operations. What the f? That's a 143 percent growth. That's incredible. That's incredible. Massive growth in revenue and a good decline in costs. That's fantastic. So we take into effect operating margin that we get a net income line up 164 percent, 11.58. Now what does that equate to? That's that's a fantastic line, and we're talking about. Uh, I mean, it just is uh, 33%. So that's ridiculous. So one-third of their revenue is straight net income. And this is why I invest in the company to begin with, and this is why I will continue to invest in them. This is what I refer to as printing money. The Fed is printing money that's fake. This is real currency, and this is good for the shareholders, right? That's printing money. That's ridiculous. Um, and you can see how that represents from an EPS standpoint, how significant that is, that much, uh, that is for a difference. That's wild. So um, keep on going, and, uh, and here we go. Uh, they get in the daily active, which we talked about, revenue we love, costs and expenses. That's the line I love here, dude. Um, capital expenditures. Uh, were 6.76 billion, which is included in that. And this is a line I love as well. Share repurchases. They repurchased $3.7 billion worth of common stock um, for the third quarter. We had $37.22 billion available and authorized for repurchases. So they've still got a ton more shares to repurchase, by the way. And let me tell you, when the stock is at these lower levels... This is the time the company's going to be buying the stock back because it's worth more than what it's at right now. It's a good investment for them to buy the stock back right now. It's not, look, it's pretty cheap. I think it's, you know, decent time for them to buy it back. Uh, cash, cash, equivalents, we'll get into that. Um, <clears throat> Headcount, this is what I like a lot, and this is where you see the cost decrease. Uh, Headcount, 66000 it's a decrease of 24% year over year. Oh, baby! <coughs> oh, my gosh. That, that voice hurt me. They got rid of 25% of the worthless employees. And they're worthless, let me tell you. The company's operating just as good as ever with 25%, better than ever, 
25% less people. That just goes to show you, and I talked about it with every one of these tech companies. I talked about it back in 2021. The hiring was just too, too much. They hired way too many people because you know a lot of these places saw revenue increasing by significant, significant amounts, more than they've ever seen. They thought they needed that many more people and could afford that many more people. Now, every single company is laying off because they couldn't. They just, unfortunately, stretched themselves a little too thin. It's okay, though. It's okay. So, that's what I love to see. Anyways, I love to see it. So, um, uh, a substantial majority of employees impacted by layoffs are no longer included. I reported headcount. So, that's cool. So, they were laid off. They're no longer in there. So, cool. Anyways, they've got a category on restructuring of how they're pursuing their you know strategy of really growing. Um are cutting the expenses, I should say, um, restructuring charges here. Nothing crazy in my eyes from what I'm seeing. Um, did have to pay some severance here for sure, and that hurts, but not too bad. I, I think that's just standard here from what I'm seeing. Next, we get into the CFO outlook. Obviously, I love seeing this. This is the meat and potatoes. They got the numbers down, okay? Um, full year total expenses to be in the range of 87 to $89 billion. Um, for this year, so prior range was 89, 88 to 91 billion. So it's down from there. So that's really fantastic. Um, a couple highlights as they have here: expect higher infrastructure-related costs next year, given the increased capital investment in the recent years. So um, <clears throat> we expect depreciate uh, uh, depreciation expenses in 2024 uh, to increase by a larger amount than 2023. And higher operating costs because of the larger infrastructure footprint expanding. I get that. So, sorry, that's that's rough by me. That was a hiccup burp. Um, second, uh, we anticipate growth in payroll expenses as we work down our current hiring underrun and add incremental talent to support priority areas. Not going to be a ton of hiring, but it's going to be absolutely required technical roles for sure. And then they mentioned Reality Labs, which is kind of what's hurting them quite a bit in terms of profit. They're spending a lot of money on Reality Labs, which I get, you know, talking about Oculus and other, um, other you know, augmented reality in general with like the Ray-Bans glasses and everything like that. We expect operating losses to increase meaningfully year over year due to ongoing product development. Um and that's not really shocking here, right? We're going to talk about, you know, new products. Not only, you know, the Quest 3 is fantastic, but they're going to work on the next biggest and best thing right after that. Um, more augmented reality options, including, well, I mean, honestly, the Quest has really all you need there because the see-through on that one, um, the see-through camera is fantastic on the Quest 3 compared to the original. It was, you know, black and white on the original, uh, on the Quest 2 even too. But the Quest 3 is full color looks clear through it uh, from the videos I've seen at least so I'm hoping it's that way for the user users so yeah um, so anyways uh, nothing crazy crazy there too it's it's not shocking but love to see it get into some of these financial reports here and, and I'm gonna look at the balance sheet next and that's probably the last thing we touch upon um, because there should be a good difference here. They're going to give me a, a nine-month stack cause, you know, based off the start of the year, which I like. And you're going to see a massive difference because of that. Um, so you see a, a big jump here is going to be on the total current assets. In the last nine months, that's jumped $20 billion. Significant. And total assets in general have jumped, uh, you know, just over $30 billion. Very significant there as well. Now here's where we get into the story of the liabilities and this is why I've always been invested in this company is the story of this balance sheet um, as they just show utter dominance in this balance sheet and they continue to do that here right we saw liabilities did increase uh, by 13 billion dollars but again we saw assets increase over the last nine months by twice that amount by 30 billion dollars so over twice that amount was increased in assets which means shareholder equity has increased significantly as well $142 billion of shareholder equity versus 125 of just nine months ago. That shows you the growth they've made here in terms of just the um, the restructuring and the efficiency. Uh, and I love to see it a lot. So we're talking about, this is the line I really love here. 
um, retained earnings here, um, which is fantastic. Seventy-five billion there, holy crap! But anyways, this equity line is my favorite line uh, because we're talking about assets minus liabilities. At the end of the day, what is your company worth? Your assets minus your liabilities. It's that shareholder equity. That's what the company is going to be worth. If everything went went awry, there's that much. You know, that's what they've got going for them. And I love that. This is a company that does it better than anyone. They're the best big tech company with a balance sheet. You know, they, they start. In my opinion, this is the best big tech balance sheet you ever see. And they're still growing revenue at a massive clip. That being said, I like where this stock's at, man. I like the level it's at. We look at it. This is going to be a forward PE on this company under 30, by the way. After this price decrease, under 30. That's ridiculous to me. I think that's a ridiculously cheap line for a company, especially talking about 20% growth rates, which is wild. Um, <coughs> $741 uh, billion market cap. And I need to remind you that full annual revenue on this company is going to be somewhere you know, in the range of $120 billion. 100, a little over 120, probably 125, I'd say. 125 billion. That is about a six times, six times uh, price, to, price to sales, which is a very, very cheap big tech company. It's very cheap, and there's a lot of room for growth. This is one I want to hold for a long, long time, 10 years at the very least. It's going to be worth a lot more in 10 years. There's going to be several splits in between then, and they might start paying a dividend because they print so much cash. That's what I got for you. Have a great one, folks.